How are you going? You alright? Are your heads full yet? <laughs> Teslas do have tutorials built into that screen that they show you. Alrighty. So go and watch a few and play with the car and get a 12 year old to teach you how to use it and you'll be right. Okay. So I'm going to introduce Luke that you haven't met before. Oh, oh. So Luke has had his Model 3 performance since September 2019. His car and my car must be twins and has travelled in it extensively across the East Coast uh, ever since, holidaying, camping, doing track days and showing people how great it is to own an EV. With, a professional, with professional experience across transport, electronics and IT, Luke brings a wide range of experience, expertise and massive amounts of knowledge to share with us today. So I give him a big hand. Yay, Luke. So I was going to talk about trips and uh, IT and how I've got slides. Um, yeah, so talking about planning a trip, um, so this sort of brushes across a bunch of you know, things we've already talked around around um, charging, but we'll start with planning a trip. Um, going to plan a trip from here to Canberra as a, just an example. Um, so thinking about you know, where you're going, what sort of tools you need, maybe possibly some cables you might need, uh, what sort of charging you plan to do on your trip, so whether you're doing DC charging or AC charging at a destination, what your backup plan is if something goes wrong, whether you call RCQ and need one of their charges or get towed somewhere, stuff like that, what sort of things will affect your consumption, so you can certainly look at the sort of, you, know, you, you can be quite used to a consumption rate for your car as you drive around town day to day, but when you load it up with pile of camping gear and bikes on a tow bar and stuff like that, there are certainly factors that will change your consumption rate of your car. And just keeping track of your progress and seeing how you're going throughout your journey. So planning the different types of trips you might do, and, and this is sort of thinking about what you tra the tra amount of travel you would do each day. Like if you're doing a you know, multi-thousand kilometre trip, you're not doing thousands of kilometres in one day, you'll be doing, you know, doing legs of that trip each day. If you're only doing a fairly short trip that is less, you know, less than 50% of your charge to get there, then you could certainly travel out to that point and back on a full charge. Uh, you just charge your car to full at home before you leave and drive out there, drive home and charge it again when you get back. Conversely, if you're going beyond 50% of the charge and you need to go further, uh, and I suppose the next category from there, sorry, is, is that you would be driving somewhere with it's far enough that um, you would you could still do it within the range of your car, within 90% of its capacity, which means that you would drive from where you are now out to you know a hotel, good in the windy or something like that, and charge there and then drive back again. Right. So, or are you staying overnight? You know, what are your options for charging whilst you're out there overnight? Would you be charging mid route? So, would you be using DC charges like superchargers to charge you know mid journey and you know morning tea, lunchtime, stuff like that? Um, and then you fix a specific route or are you trying to be flexible and just, you know, travel into the great unknown and make an adventure. So these, these slides cover Model 3, the, the slides were done before the Model Y was shipping in Australia, but just to give you an idea, um, basically the same for Model, these, these numbers are actually probably pretty accurate for Model Y now, uh, Model 3 will get better range than all of these typically, um, the current generation of Model 3s. So yeah, 360, 460 and performance. So you can sort of see a bit of that impact there, that those 30 kilometers less range for performance is because it's got bigger wheels. It's got the same battery and motors largely as a long range, um, but has wider tires and those tires have made that 30 kilometer difference to its um, range capacity. So ways you plan your trip. Um, so I mean, the, the trips we're talking about, we're, we're talking about more than, you know, uh, multi-leg, multi-day kind of trip. So in car, which we've had a bit of a look at this before, where you could look at the charges that are available in an area on the map in the car. Uh, you can uh, see whether you can show destination charges or DC charges. So I'm using the term destination charges, and I, and I think destination charging is a good way, to, and it's a, it's a Tesla term. It's a good way to think about that sort of category of charging. It's charging when you get somewhere, when you're doing something. So you find 
common locations for destination charges are wineries and sort of long stay lunch places where you would be there for a few hours and certainly even over 11 kilowatts or 7 kilowatts on an AC charge you would get a significant amount of charge back. So you could go somewhere that's 300 kilometres away, put 200 k's of range in it and get back safely, right? For, you know, if you were having a long lunch at a, at a, at a winery away out west or something. Uh, and then there's supercharging, you know, mid-trip charging where you want it to be really fast because you, you know, any, any, a minute spent charging is a minute not spent driving. So there's supercharges where, you know, it's 10, 15, 20 minutes for the charging and you're back on the car and going again and you're only stopping to, you know, pee and get a coffee mm -hmm. basically. So you can see all those <coughs> selections there in the car. You can filter between destination charges or, um, and the other, and the other uh, sorry, key category of destination charging is motel charges, and motel charges are the best. You know, and that's by far the, the 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 best convenience improvement to any trip I've ever made is staying at hotels that have destination charges. It means you leave in the morning every morning with the car at 100%. So it means that any of the even supercharger stops you make during the day, you can stop for like 10 minutes and put that extra you know few k's in that means that you're basically driving all day. Um, Without you know, any drama on the road, you've got you know you're leaving in the morning with 500 k's of range in the car. So um, in the car, you can see those destination charges and supercharges. You won't see third-party DC charges. Uh, so you need other applications from other people. So PlugShare is a open, editable database run by normal people for normal people. Uh, it is like Wikipedia, um, it's a catalogue of you know, user-generated information. So on the basis you should train it with, treat it with a grain of salt, it's not a professional business. It, you know, the information there is just gath gathered from other normal people, so there's errors and omissions and might not be up to date and there's a bit of fuzziness to it. It's not raw data from the charger like you would get from the Tesla app for the Tesla chargers or from you know, the Chargefox app for Chargefox chargers, it's, it's a bit greyer than that. But it's very comprehensive. It's got lots and lots of all of the different brands. It's, it's brand agnostic. Uh, it's got really good, more human information in it. If you read the notes, you can look through the reviews and photos and comments and stuff on each charger and say, oh, look, this, you know, the map's a bit wrong, or you've got to, you know, go in a car park entry, you know, B2 or something like that to find them. There's some really good information there. You can see check-ins, so when people are using charges, they'll check in to say, um, and, and it'll ask them when they check out whether they had a good charging experience. So certainly when I'm travelling to Rockhampton, there's a whole bunch of single charges up along the way to Rockhampton that I need to use that, are, that belong to the Queensland Government. They, um, because they're singles, it's pretty easy for one of them to be broken and just not be available. And you'll need to be able to plan your trip that you could skip that town. They're about every 150 k's all the way up the coast between here and Cairns. So, you know, my car is more than capable of skipping one of them, but I need to know which one I need to skip before I start so I can plan that out. If I turn up at 0% at a broken charger, that's going to be a pain in the ass. So I will look at the room you now, when I'm leaving that morning, I can look at the charges I was thinking about stopping at, I can look at the check-ins and, and broadly over the last few days there's been several positive check-ins, I'm good, I I'm, can be pretty confident that I can turn up there and it'll work. Uh, it doesn't, it's not a planning tool, um, the software in the car, I suppose one of the bullet points and sort of pros and cons there is the planning tool in the car will plan out the whole trip, it will you know, as we showed travelling to Sydney or whatever, it will tell you where you'll be stopping for how long and, and, and take your route where it needs to go to get into charges. PlugShare's not that. It's not a planning tool. It's just a discovery and um, learning you know, database tool. And then you get into, uh, basically, it's twin, a better route planner. It takes data from PlugShare and a bunch of other sort of public databases and turns it into a planning tool. So this will let you put in specs of your car, it will even talk to the Tesla API so that it gets real consumption data live from your car as you trip along that journey, and will take you to a mixture of all brands of chargers to make that destination. Is that a platform or a So both, they're all both. So 
Um, our, the resources pack we'll email out after this has I've links got, to I've got some handouts as well as one yeah. email that will have those listed yeah. on it. So there is a web version of the in-car planner, it's called Find Us. So Tesla, if you Google Tesla, Find Us is one word, F-I-N-D-U-S. Uh, and that includes all of the database of all their charges. Uh, and there is a web trip planner as well on Tesla website, which is largely the same as the trip planner that's in your car. The one in your car is better in that it knows you and your consumption and your car and how full it is, so it can really make it accurate here, right here, right now, math on how to get to that destination. Uh, a better planner can do the same thing, except it will, you know, it'll, it'll say, oh, you go to this charge box and this supercharger and this EV charger and, and get you there quicker and better and possibly cheaper because, you know, superchargers are excellent and I would highly recommend using, the, if, if, the in, if wherever you're going, the in-car planner says you can get there, just follow it. That, that is your trip, the number one trip planning advice. If your car will navigate there and, and using superchargers, do that. No problem. It is the most expensive way of charging. So Tesla superchargers cost about 60 cents a kilowatt hour, which on a per kilometer basis works out about the same as petrol. But you're only using it for that occasional trip, so it's not the end of the world. Whereas, you know, through New South Wales particularly, there's a whole bunch of you know, networks that are very cheap, that are more, you know, somewhere between zero and 25 cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, so you can be, you know, save, save a bit of money using other charges, but there'll be a single one and it might be broken or there's, you know, there's less of them, you're competing with a, a, all sorts of other cars, you're even competing with other Teslas because there's a bunch of people who, um, despite buying a $60,000 car, want to save five bucks on electricity when they travel, so they're using those cheaper or freer ones. So I, for my mind, if, if your car can get there using the in-car planning, go do that. And a better route planner is the sort of uh, NASA fully scientific, lots and lots of options, lots and lots of figures and calculations, and you can set priorities around whether you want to stop more often for shorter charges, or you know um, stop more frequently. You know, depending you know, if you have a particularly small bladder, you might want to be stopping every 20 minutes. You can set to do that. Um, or you can, you know, I mean, the, the standard option is optimising for speed overall, right? And get the get the journey done as quickly as possible. So you will go to, you know, prioritise super fast charges because they get you back on the road quicker. Um, it will also let you plan multi-day trips. So you can click on a on a destination charger and say, I'll be sleeping overnight here, and it will add that to the math, and you can plan a full multi-day, like you've got to drive to Adelaide, uh, as I've done. Um, you can plan out a multi-day trip. I tend to probably not plan the whole trip. I tend to plan daily legs of each trip and then aim for my overnight stay to be at the hotel with a destination charger. Luke, well, a good uh, place, uh, good route for a better route planner is to Dubbo. Yeah. Because going from Tamworth through the Dubbo, there's a bit of a desert as far as charging is concerned. Uh, it's and a lot better now when it's supercharged in Tenerfield. You should only drive at 90 kilometres an hour? Or yeah, so, so there are super, there's a supercharger bay at Tenerfield now, that opened like a month ago. Uh, my girlfriend lives in Tamworth, so, well, her family lives in Tamworth. So um, we do that fairly regularly and Tenerfield opening has been a godsend as far as just being able to, particularly if we're, if we're taking all of our kids with us and we need to take two cars, um, you can, yeah. <coughs> Save it's a fair bit of effort. As EVs get more and more, I'm sort of thinking, have you ever come across like you can plan that, but you get there and there's already somebody on the charger? Like yeah. Queuing. I'm wondering yeah, yeah, queuing. So, certainly, so thing, so many has happened on occasion. You might go to a hotel and how many, if you can plan to do it on that hotel. Like yeah. How much queuing have you come across? Um, not much. Uh, driving to Rockhampton on the first day of the school holidays can be a bit of an adventure sometimes with a bit of sitting around and waiting and having a Type 2 cable with me. Like if you, as I said, if you travel in Queensland, I would buy regularly, as I do, I drive to Rockhampton two or three times a year. Uh, I'll take a Type 2 cable because at least then if the, the DC charger is either busy or um, broken, 
you can just stop for a, a couple of hours and charge off AC and, and then make the next 150k link to the next one. <coughs> Um, when I have travelled to Rockhampton with Katrina in two cars with all of our kids uh, and took a Type 2 cable and we basically alternated where we'd get to a charge station and plug one of the cars in on DC and the other one on AC and then do the opposite of the next one and we got there at a good rate like you know the, the amount of AC charging you got in the, the second car um, for their, like they're pretty slow AC, they're only 50 kilowatts DC chargers, so you're typically there for about 30 or 40 minutes, which is still a useful amount of AC charging at, at 11 kilowatts. And the AC charging, that's a non-Tesla charge? Yeah, they're all charge fox, so I think. Yeah, the, the charge fox are the billing sort of contractor for, for the, the Queensland government charges. They, they manage the billing solution, basically. Um, as far as queuing at charges goes, so the Tesla trip planner in your car knows. And you can see when you look so at the... You can see if somebody else is already... Yeah, so on screen in the car, um, you'll see the little red pins where the superchargers are, and they'll have a number on them. That's how many free bays there are. Okay. If it's got a little um, cross with a clock kind of logo on it, it means you'll, have, you'll wait. <laughs> uh, and you do occasionally see it, certainly the one at Fortune Valley. Uh, it's right in the middle of the city, there are only four bays, um, can be really busy, and I've certainly sat around waiting there. Yeah, okay. um, not long, 10, 15 minutes, and someone will move along and you'll get in there. But, um, yeah, you can wait. The Tesla trip planner just knows that, and just figures it out. Well, even if there are multiple supercharger options as you drive between here and Sydney, it'll it'll know, oh, this one is busy, or we'll, and you can click on them, and it'll have a little graph of how busy it is at different hours of the day and knows like, okay, well, you're, leave, you're leaving now, you'll be at this one at lunchtime. Yeah. That one's usually really busy at lunchtime, but there's another one 50 k's down the road yeah. that won't be. We'll just skip it and, and push through because yeah. it'll be quicker on average. So it knows all that. And, and you just the very easy to use it's a supercharging network. Its integration with the car is brilliant and nobody else is remotely close to doing charging as well as Tesla and that whole trip planning. So we'll plan a trip um, between here and Canberra or something people if they're super keen we'll do that all in one hit or we'll look at options to stay overnight along the way and we'll probably talk about this a bit and some networks we've used to do that. So this is how I would plan a trip, this is a trip to, to Canberra. Uh, and how you'd take a leisurely trip, so if you were doing some holidaying with my kids, I would go, you know, a few hundred k's each day and have a nap. So, you'll see on a bunch of these, so, you know, we have, you know, where, where we're going, where, so where we're, where we're starting each day and where we're landing, so we're going from home, home to Coffs Harbour, it's 395 kilometres, points of interest, things we'd want to check with tourists, we're going to check out some cool shit on the way. Where we're going to charge that day, and on that day, 395 k's, we don't need to charge, so we're not going to charge. Uh, we're going to sleep here, the accommodation is going to cost me $158. I've booked it on Booking.com, I've confirmed my, my um, charger with the venue, so this is probably an important part of you know, dealing with overnight charging at hotels, is ring them. I, I, in in Booking.com, there's little you know, notes you'd like to tell the venue. I say, I know you've got a Tesla destination charger. I've seen it on Tesla.com, or you know, I've seen. You can filter Booking.com by, by hotels that have charging. I've had both places that have chargers not list them on Booking.com, and places say on Booking.com they have a charger when they in fact don't. It's some car park like four blocks away that actually has the charger, and they think that's close enough. <laughs> um, and then I'll link to my better route plan of how I'm actually going to do that trip. So have you haven't actually booked the charger, you just confirmed that? Well, well, so no, on booking.com, I'll put in a message in the, in the booking saying, Hi, I'm saying, you know, at your, your venue on this day, you, you, I, I understand you have a Tesla destination charger, can, we, can you make it available to me? I'm happy to pay $20 if, you know, to take over the costs because they generally don't list a price or anything like that. Um, out of the probably 30 places I've stayed and offered $20, none of them have taken it. 
so far, but there'll come a point where realistically, you know, it, it's, it, as, as more and more people use them, yeah, it's, it's going to be a real cost. There, there will be some coverage for the cost eventually, but most places just swallow it. But to absolutely confirm they've got it and that they're ready for you when you turn up. Yeah. Yeah. So frequently, they will put a witch's hat in the car space because they're shared parking spaces, so they, they'll typically get used as normal parking spaces because they don't have Tesla owners turning up all the time, so they'll use a car space for other stuff. But if you talk to them and book it, they can put a witch's hat in it. Uh, fairly frequently, some of the resorts I've stayed, that's where they park their golf cart, like their luggage cart. So they just, that's the parking bay that they park their golf cart in. And they'll just move it. And so when you turn up, say, hey, I've got my Tesla here, where can I plug it in? And they'll say, oh, I'll get Dave down to move the golf cart for you. And, and it's fine. There, sorry, there would be other charges at car cyber, not only that one. Oh, so, I mean, I, I want a destination charge. If I have destination charge, I don't have to make a plan. I can sleep it off. No, but I'm saying if you, mm. if you just want to stop the cough solver and just charge to keep going and not overstay, but, but there are other charges of cough solver, like... Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. not just that one there. No, no, this is a plan that I've made no, for, no, for no, my... I'm saying there are other charges yeah. of cough solver, apart right. from the one that we... we just yeah, look at, look, have a look at plug... We'll, we'll, we'll have a look at plug share in a minute. Yeah. Um, there's... there's our, Orange spots on plug share are DC chargers, and they're all around the place. So, okay. now, but I was just explaining my system. I'm a bit of a nerd, so I've planned it all in Excel because, you know. Um, um, the 394K, yep. you said how much charge do you have left? Were you picking up? No, it was, I think I landed with like 8% or something. Is that right? 8? 8. Eight. 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 Yeah. Well, <laughs> Anything more than zero is fine. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll tell you, the number one rule of planning a trip is always, so as a figure of speech in, in you know, EV land, is always be charging. That is, if there's an opportunity to charge, always take it. Charged legally, charged nicely, do the right thing, ask permission, don't just plug it into a random PowerPoint in a car park, that is stealing. Um, but, if you can go, if you're going to a friend's place and you're staying overnight, and you think oh, I don't want to impose, I won't ask him whether I can plug my car into a PowerPoint, and the next day you get up and the car's got 20% left in it, and you have to go DC charge for you know 20 minutes before you start your day. It's just whereas if you just asked your friend, hey mate, can I plug a PowerPoint in? You'll leave the next day with 80%, and your day's just opened up. You just don't have that sort of stumbling block for your next day. You know, always be charging is, is a one little phrase. The other one I think that needs to go hand in hand with that is always be navigating. Use the navigation in the car, put the address you're going to into the navigation of the car, even if you know where you're going. You know, I know how to get across Harvard. I know I go to that hotel. I used to go to that hotel all the time. I know where it is. Still put in the navigation because that will tell the car where you're going and it will be continuously calculating how much fuel you'll have left when you arrive at that destination. It'll say at the bottom of that nav screen, as we showed you before, that you'll be getting up 8%. Now, if you've got roof racks on and a mountain bike on the roof, you'll lose, use a lot more fuel than the car or anyone else could have estimated. But as you're driving, it's recalculating that and saying, oh, we're, you know, I've been tr cruising at 100 kilometers an hour for the last 50 k's, and I'm using 20% more than I normally would, I'm going to start winding back that estimate and it's going to pop up with a message on the screen saying that you'll, you'll initially it'll say slow down to reach destination and we'll get into consumption factors in a second but you know it'll tell it so for, this, for the purposes of this slide always be navigating and you will net if, and if it says more than zero percent when you get there you will get there yeah. <laughs> where is your sense of adventure <laughs> I actually put them into my Outlook calendar and yes, you put the location points. and That's a good then idea. Yep. So up in the calendar on the car yep. and I go, and oh, okay. you have to just in that button yeah, it's just just next to that appointment. Yeah, you know, that's, that's a good idea. On the yeah, yeah. Um, so a better route planner, if you subscribe to a better route planner, if you've got the trip in there, on the phone, you can, on each of those, as, as you leave for the next charge point, there's a button to say send a car. 
and it will send the destination to the app of the car. Uh, one thing we didn't go in, we didn't, we didn't show you much about the app. One of the great features of the app, apart from remote controlling the air conditioning and um, using summon and stuff like that, the other great thing is that you can share songs and navigation destinations with the Tesla app on your phone. So you can be in Google Maps and you just click the share button and pick Tesla, it will send that destination to the navigation in your car. So as you're walking out of one shop and you navigate into the next one, just hit share with the car and the car will take you there. So that's so a better app kind of uses that functionality to share the next destination as you travel along with the app. Sorry? Yeah. Uh, so, on with that. So, the things you need for your trip, and we've talked about this a bit, um, is the different apps you'll use, um, things you want to just you know, prepare yourself for. So, making sure you've preloaded those apps. You know, the, if you decided you're going to be using EV or Chargefox charges along the way, it's probably a good idea. Now would be the time to install those apps before, you know, the night before. Um, get your credit card details put into them and all that kind of thing, rather than standing in the sun with screaming children and trying to figure it out. Pro okay. tip. Um, check your pressure um, and tyres, you know, check all your tyres have got plenty of tread on them and all, you know, wearing evenly. Make sure that, you know, none of, that's, that's a bit of old, it's an old screenshot with an old picture of the car, but um, you see the numbers go orange when they're low. Uh, it'll pop up a warning saying the tyres are low. Uh, and just remember that the charge, same as always be charging. You know, remember to plug the car in the night before so that you fall when you leave and everything goes to plan. Remember to slide the, um, you know, on a performance car you'll typically have the, the limit set to 80 or 90%. Remember to slide it up to 100 the day before your trip so that you're actually leaving 100% for, for your next day for your big journey. Um, so, consumption factors, as I was talking about before. By far the biggest factor is speed and aerodynamics. It's pushing the air in front of you. Uh, so the faster you go, there's an exponential increase in the energy required. If you go twice as fast, you need four times as much energy to push that air out of the way. So um, you'll see when you're navigating, and if a car thinks you're a bit borderline, if you get if your your destination is going to hit with less than five percent. The car will warn you, telling you to slow down, and it will pop up a message saying, "Keep below 100 kilometres an hour to you know, reach your destination." And if it gets worse, if the situation gets worse, it will say, "Keep below 95 kilometres an hour to make your destination." And eventually, if you don't slow down, if it simply runs out of practical capacity to make your destination. It will say, "Charging required to meet destination." You will see that if you're travelling out in the middle of nowhere, um, well away from any destination charges that the car is aware of, uh, you will get that message anyway, um, simply because it just doesn't know that there's any reliable charging out in the great depths of Western Queensland kind of thing. Um, this is another question regarding travelling. Um, do Tesla make or nor do they buy like Car bras, you know, I kept with some car, car stuff and chips and that. Do they, would they, do they, if they made, would, would they be buying that effect? Uh, that sort of no, thing? I'm a, um, I've never seen it. Yeah, we'll make a fuel source, I just think. Uh, so, so, the modern version of that would be paint protection film. Yeah. Right, they that, that clear, you know, right. contact that you wrap your car in. Yeah. Uh, I think it's more trouble and more expense than just painting the car. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I just wear it and paint it. Uh, it's about as much as repainting the front of your car. So, and just to protect yeah. the front is too Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Alright, so uh, there are other sort of factors. So, <laughs> it's worth saying all of these factors affect the petrol car just as much. The difference in an electric car, in particular Tesla, is you can see all of these numbers and you can see it changing live on screen. And it'll tell you as you drive up a hill. Your, you know, your, your fuel consumption, you can see that graph go up and as you drive down, you'll see it regenerating and you can see that detail. So I think that, that um, information overload you get from the, you know, the, the, the raw data and statistics you get out of the car contributes a lot to what people call range anxiety, right? Like, I can see the range as I go up the hill, I can see it, you know, my life sucking away before me, sort of thing. And, it, it, whereas on, a, on an old petrol car, you've got this big fuel gauge that's basically full, half, or empty, and you know you just you used to just eh, be right. And if you, you know, broadly, if you're always navigating, pay attention to what the car sees, says it'll be fine. 
But these things do make a difference, and it's sort of interesting from a, a nerdy point of view. I've done a fair bit of driving around with roof, with bikes on roof racks or bikes on a tow hitch on the back and camping gear in the car and things, and it all takes away. Rain's probably one that, I don't know, not many people even realised in petrol cars, but rain will make a 5 or 10% difference to your fuel consumption. Because as you're driving through water on the road, the tyres are sticking to the road more, and all of that water that you see being sprayed off the side of the car was pumped by the car. The energy that went into that, pumping that water out of the way has come out of the battery or fuel tank, as the case may be. But speed's a big one. Take off five, take five kilometres an hour off your speed, save 10% of your um, consumption, right? So it can make a very big difference if you're, if you're running close to the line. Weight, terrain, hills, going up hills, towing. So towing is mostly aerodynamics. It's you know having this giant square box that you're dragging through the air, it's like having a box flat behind you, makes a huge difference. Uh, and different wheels and tyres. I've got aftermarket wheels on mine, and they do make about a 15% difference to the amount of energy it consumes. But gosh darn, they're pretty. Um, so life is so, I mean, gen, so the, the, the wheels I've got, but not the wheels that came from Tesla, I bought them from another company. The wheel or the tyre? Or both, yeah. Yes, yeah, so I've got you know, 305 tyres, like I've got tyres that are like all that wide on the back of mine. Oh, yeah. And they'll use that more? Because hmm, they're just less aerodynamic. The, the, you know, the Tesla ones, particularly like the aero covers, are very slick, and the tyres you know, are of certain width, so the amount of air, that air and road contact that those tyres make is all friction. The wider the tyre is, the more friction it makes, the more air, air it's pushing out of the way. So this is the energy graph. These are screenshots from a oh, I don't know, software from about a year ago. They're, they're a little bit different now, but fundamentally it's the same thing as far as trips planning goes. Uh, you'll see the grey line. You know, this, is, this is where you're starting your trip. And these are kilometres or miles in the screenshot. We've stolen it from the internet. Um, and the grey line is where it estimated when you started based on your previous consumption of the car and the current sort of rolling average of your consumption rate. It thought you would land with you know, this much percentage. But as you drive along and it, you, you've been using more than it thought you should have by now, uh, it's, it's estimating a bit lower, going down into the orange sort of below 15% sort of zone or 20% zone. And it's fine as long as you're. <coughs> As long as you get to your destination with some charge and you're 100% certain the charger at your destination will actually work and recharge your car, it's fine. <laughs> um, you can see the dips and wavering in this line as it goes down, as you, as you, you know, this is distance versus charge level. You can see where this will dip down and where it's, and that's the consumption, you know, you're, you're consuming more aggressively than the average, you know, the straight lines are sort of average consumption of the car on flat ground. When it dips down, this is it going up, up a hill. It's consuming a lot of energy, and it's putting that energy into you know, lifting the car up higher. And then you'll see it actually gains, like over this sort of you know couple of kilometres here, it actually gains charge. <coughs> the car is recharged as you've gone back down that hill, and pretty much come back to being on the average. And that's the magic of an electric car. That's and that's you know, or a hybrid car for that matter. It's it's. It's being able to use that energy and then get it back again. Whereas on a traditional petrol car, you put that energy um, on the on the downhill into brakes, just slowing you down, going down the hill into into physical brakes and engine braking. Whereas an electric car, that energy comes back into the battery and you reuse it again. Um, if you plug a diagnostic connector into the car, you can tell how much of the energy from the car came from charging at a power point and how much of the energy that the car uses came from regeneration. And I'm running at about a third. Third of the energy my car uses to run itself is energy it got back out of its own wheels, so, which is pretty phenomenal. And that was basically energy that a petrol car would have just, I don't know, just been choking us to death. Um, so this is the same thing, except it's you know the cars just started with a more pessimistic um, understanding of, of your consumption over the, that journey. Um, I guess, yeah, questions, but I'll, I'll show you um, a couple of these apps. Just, uh, this. Thank <laughs> you. 
Skip and I'll do it. So great fun. Also, I've done. I haven't done skip here. I've done skip in at Lakeside and um, done a few sprint track days at Lakeside. Great cars to do a track day in. Um, really good fun. Uh, much less racket, but um, it's pretty cool. You can hear the tyres and how how the cars are actually working. So it's a plug-in. Uh, sorry. I'd love to so see how fast the car goes. Yeah, so you sign up. Um, so a lot of car clubs, so we, we run events with BMW Club and things like that. So they'll organise a day, they'll hire the track for the day, they'll have instructors. <coughs> Absolutely uninsured. You crash it, it's your problem. Yeah, yeah, so if, you, if, if you, you've got a membership, you'll get emails about new events that are up and coming, and you'll see those track days. Um, we also participate in the Inter Club Challenge with a bunch of other car clubs as well. So doing, and a bunch of those events are off track as well. So that we do navigation and economy run type things that are you know, more social and more puzzle based than more speed based. Um, yeah, so you, you find clues about how to navigate, and, and you need to they'll ask you questions about what colour a particular monument was or whatever, and get points over the day. And, yeah. Lots, lots of good fun. So, plug you. Um, you can set filters here, uh, what sort of plugs you use. So, I've just got it set to um, you, know, you pick the charges that are available. Uh, we can't see that. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> things like that. for exclusion because they can't use them, or at least not in Queensland. Oh, that's just in New South Wales. The, the third party is using superchargers is currently only in New South Wales. And that was only, it's only for the last two months or something. It's a fairly new concept. And it's not all of the it's only yeah. in the So, uh, you see, so this is all the DC chargers that are around. of Tesla destination charges that are not in plug share because Tesla have added them to their database and not enough people have discovered them, not drivers of non-Teslas and things that use plug share a lot um, haven't realised they're there um, and going to Tesla they're in the car now and that's pretty you know, good enough but Tesla find us, let's see we'll get them. Um, You'll be able to see the, um, all, the, all the destination charges around. If you click on one of them, it will tell you a bit about it. It'll tell you the phone number, it'll tell you what facilities are available, whether it's close to toilets, whether it's free, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, you can see ones that are out for service. Um, there will be a supercharger. In, uh, sorry, that, that is service. Sorry, there, there are, um, you'll see some of them. Uh, are, let's continue to be things I've learned about there are some of them that are uh, out of service or, you know, so that one's grey, it's Cooper. There is a charger, supercharger coming to Cooper at some point in the future. Uh, show them that. Um, Quarter one, you don't see live. Uh, <laughs> yeah. so um, you. Did there's six superchargers going in at Rochdale? Like Sorry? Did there's six Tesla superchargers going in at Rochdale shops as we speak? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Why some red and one some? Uh, so, so the different lot uh, are for clothes are. That's the, the index, so they're superchargers and the grey ones are the destination mm -hmm. chargers. So DC or AC chargers. Um, and you can see, as you click on some of these, um, you know, it's a horse, horse and farm stay, it's got an address, it's got a link to their website, and you can click on the link and book your accommodation. Send them a message saying you want to use a destination charger and you're away. And a lot of them will say just for the customers. 
So obviously if you're not going there to stay, they won't let you just pull in and charge. Yeah. So you just need to be mindful of that for those sort of stuff. Yes, some are free for all, but frequently it's for customer value. Sometimes if you're really stuck and you need a charge and assistance yeah. only, occasionally yeah. a nice phone call and an offer of payment and a please call me on desperate yeah. will usually work. So, yeah, um, lots of options to filter different networks. If there is a particular network that you feel particularly offended by, you can filter them out. Um, for example, ChargePoint. Yeah, uh, they don't. They don't really exist um, do in Australia do. anymore, so um, I would just ignore that they exist. And there's also other options out there. And ChargeNet is New Zealand, so you're not going to find many in Australia. Yeah, I mean, if, if you're not going to find them, <laughs> that's not worth filtering them out. But yeah, ChargePoint, particularly, there are some ChargePoint chargers around. They're all type one, and I mean, and they'll be filtered out because of my connector options here. You can still use chat point even though it's not here. You can still sign yeah. up. Yeah. You just have to when you sign up to get an app, you just have to sign up with a US dot <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, 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 yeah. that, and you'll still get that. Not no, no, as when I do my project. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to remember, if you want to remember what a US postcode is, not a two one eight. Hashtag no judgment. <laughs> um, yeah, so you, I mean, you can turn on that. If you've got a Type 1 adapter, which is also known as J1772, you could turn that on and say, well, actually, I, I've got an adapter with me, so I, I can use these as well. Um, and a better app planner. <coughs> so, yeah, a better app planner is certainly the uh, super nerdy engineering option. Um, API integration is um, exposed and I need to redo it. But uh, you can plan out a trip and it will run some math and turn away in the background. So I've got a Brisbane and Canberra in there as an example. Uh, and it will take me mostly to, to Tesla, Tesla charges because they're in good places and they're fast and available and um, you know, multi bay so it generally knows how long people spend there, so it uses all that as a factor. But it's going to a variety, it's going to a couple of EVs as well at, at um, Tyndale and uh, Seven Hills in New South Wales. Is this a subscription? <coughs> uh, it's free for basic planning. If you subscribe, you get that API integration where it will talk to your car and knows what your actual consumption is, and we'll do the live planning, where as you drive, it's re -up, recalculating all these numbers as you drive along. If you stop for somewhere longer than expected. Um, so what's really common is that you'll drive to the charger at Grafton and it says you only need to spend 20 minutes, but they had a really good pub and the beer was really tasty. So I spent 35 minutes there and you'll see the other numbers drop because you left, you know, it was, it was working on the math of being, you know, the, the absolutely fastest way to get there was to spend exactly 20 minutes there and only charge up to 80%. But if you charge up to 90%, yeah, and you'll have to charge less on the rest on the other legs of the trip and it will figure all that out and recalculate as you drop. Well you got that screen up where you got say so you left from Brisbane, you got a ten ten day mm, Yeah, yes. So that eight percent is that what you've got left? So it's it's it, 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 there? Yeah. yeah, and this is all adjustable. There are squillions of adjustment <laughs> options. You can also you could also say so if you left home with 90% instead of 100, yeah. so you can put that in at the start and then all of those numbers can change by the end of the and it's in, I've, I've said it that the minimum I want to arrive at is 5%. If I was a more cautious individual, I might say that I'd be more hum comfortable with 15%. <laughs> and it will recalculate all of it. Yeah. So, uh, also, I would say um, I was going to be leaving really early in the morning and I was going to be landing at Port Macquarie before 10 a.m. and it's actually at a winery and being at a winery at before 10 a.m. is really boring and there's nowhere to go and the toilets aren't even open. So I'd probably avoid, no, I'd avoid on that one and it would recalculate and just use whatever else it could because I know that's just not a good place to be before 10 a.m. in the morning. But after 10 a.m. it's a <laughs> yeah. Probably one of my favourites. Yeah. <laughs> you just stay for an extra beer and then maybe you know top up a little bit more and then get to the next. Yeah. 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 So so and the live the, the live planning tool with a uh, better app and the planning tool in the car will work with you on the line and take advantage of any improvements that you make to your charging level at any of these stops. Well, can you uh, a spreadsheet for that? Sorry. CSV. Well, that's uh, better route planner spin out. Yeah, I haven't tried that. 
Um, good question. Export. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so that, that is pretty much the same thing. Like, yeah, so it tells you how long you'll be driving and exactly when you'll be arriving and all that sort of stuff, assuming you stick to the plan. So you can tell it how fast you want to drive. You can tell it that you want to travel at plus or minus six kilometers an hour compared to the speed limit. Um, and it will, you'll, you, if you say that you drive, you know, that your, your defaults are, you know, plus 5% on the speed limit, it will use that for your consumption estimate as well. Like, it will know that you're going to use more energy because you're traveling faster than yeah, you should. So the share options are to send to Tesla, um, share the link, share to a map, open in Google Maps, export to Excel, or add to calendar. If you have multiple Teslas, it will send it to the one that's open on your phone. So it may yeah. be not the one you're going to be driving in. So you may need to resend it when you get to the car and realise that it sent it to the wrong car. Yeah. If you own multiple Teslas, you can you get a slight swipe left or right in the app, and the other one you've left it on most recently is the one that when you share to the app, it will share to the, the most recent car that you own. And also, if you've been fiddling around planning a trip, and you've got it just beautifully how you want it, you can save that plan. Yeah. And that's so you don't have that to then go back in, refiddle, yeah, reset it all up. So and that's if you're going to do several different trips, I'm going to plan this leg, save it, then I'm going to plan my next leg, save it, and you can pull those particular yeah. save journeys back up. And that's all the links I had in my spreadsheet on, on the app on a better route planner. Yeah. So do all your fiddling around at home, plan where you're going to go, you can do it get on that the nicely set up, yeah. Yeah. and then, then hit the share button, send it to your Tesla, send it to Google Maps, whichever you want. I used to have the open it on the web browser on the screen of the car, but it's a bit like it's not remarkably great web browser. And you would like you have password and have I use a password database, as everyone should. Um, and typing in my randomized passwords on the computer screen is uh, what I'm not really with. Okay. Now did you tell them that if you have it in Tesla that it's actually your battery gets yeah, if it got synchronized, it knows it knows the actual level of your battery and will start your plan. Like if I, you know, no, this, no, this no. plane's estimating at 100 percent but if my car's actually got 28 percent in it, it'll be telling me to go to Mount Rabat and charge first or something, right? Yeah, but it conditions your battery to be fast charged. Oh yes, yeah, so certainly in the car. Uh, if you're navigating to a Tesla supercharger in the car, it will be preconditioning the battery, so warming the battery up so that when you get to that um, charger. The battery is primed to absorb as much energy as quickly as possible uh, to make your charging session quicker. If you don't, it gets cranky at you. <laughs> oh, it just yeah. takes, takes longer. It just takes longer. It doesn't, it doesn't do any damage. To say Depending on where you're heading to charge, you can trick the I think car into pre -conditioning. You get grout at So yeah. you can have your a better route planner map up and sitting on Google Maps on your phone, and that's where you're driving to. But you know, for example, like in Goulburn, like literally right next door to each other are some third party DC charge, fast chargers and a Tesla fast charger. So you can tell your car, I'm going to the Tesla fast charger, it will precondition for you, and then you go to the other one because they're cheap. Just try to um, it's not free. Um, there's, it, it, it uses energy as well. So, so preconditioning uses energy in the battery to heat the battery. So it's overall less efficient. So it will cost you more money, but it'll save you some time. And it's optimising for time, not cost. Um, Is there any more questions? Oh, oh, just in general? Yeah, I think, I think we're I'd like, this is the end of proceedings this today, one? right? Yeah. Like, so no, not this, but I've just got, okay. I've just bought a Model 3, right? Yep. And I want to put a tow bar on it. Yep. And I've, got, I've already got a trailer at home, which is a, a big trailer, like an F5. Like a box like a dump trailer, huh? Yeah, yeah, just ordinary box trailer. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean? I can use that trailer, is it, is it going to be too heavy? Um, so the, the a Model 3 will tow, so I, I've got a tow bar on mine and I installed it at the end of 2019. It's one of the first cars in Australia to have a tow bar fitted to it. I imported it myself. I um, worked, so the, the Tesla owner car paid for the engineering, but I organised all the engineering of it to get it certified. The car's ready to tow. There's not, Tesla had long promised to sell a tow bar for the Model 3, but at 
to yeah, date, yeah. never got around to it. So you guys had money over and fit to the car. Um, it uh, will be rated to tow 750 kilos unbraked and 1,000 kilos with an electronic brake, mm -hmm. so with a, with a trailer brake. So as long as you're within those boundaries, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Well, these are the these are the because I'm not sure whether it's a. Yeah, so long as you don't put more than a thousand kilos. Yeah, so it would be what you put in it too. So yeah, I mean, the trailer could be rated for more. The trailers are rated as a thousand. Yeah, yeah so, so, so that should be all right. Yeah. Provided you know, I'm not going to go overboard and put the whole house and stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know. yeah. And, and as long as you're not planning on towing it 500 k's no, no, because you're it, not going to get that on one charge with the trailer. You just say it's <laughs> from Murder Chan to, yeah. to, to, to the dump or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's what I just thought yeah. it would be. And maybe, well, I, 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 I doubt that it'd be, you'd be going into state, which I've done before in other cars. But you like could, you'd just be, you'd be stopping it. at every one of those orange spots. <laughs> so, and you, you could certainly... Yeah, you'd have to really plan that. You'd have, I think you'd have to have to following it into, into better planning. You can you set your expected consumption. Like yeah. it's showing you here now. Yes. So you can set that up to like yeah. 250, so 217. Would you have to put all your weight and stuff on it? Like, well, so, so that's another question I was going to ask you. Um, not towing your car, but putting stuff in your car, like... You do a big Ikea run? Like, like, well, like, yeah, or little boxes of it, we can take some stuff to you just take. So that's where you're putting the same trip weight. Yeah. So if, if, if you're just doing like an Ikea run, you're going to load your car with a pile of stuff, or a Bunnings run, and you're going to load your car up with a pile of stuff, and, and you, you know, 5, 10, 15 k's to get home, it's not too big a deal. Yeah, yeah. But if, you, if you're going to do a big stay. trip with a, a good load on, it's Plus, really worth setting up everything in a better route planner, right. putting in an estimate of your weight load on board, etc. And it's going to give you a more accurate estimate of what you're going to do. That's the same trip, and it's basically it's added an hour to the casting time to the trip. Okay. The same trip with the trailer, it's like we're using 270 watt hours per kilometer. Mm -hmm. So the consumption of the car is measured in watt hours per kilometer. So a kilowatt hours, thousand watt hours. Um, a typical Tesla, like a, a Model 3 or a Model Y, would use about 150 watt hours per kilometer, which is 0.15 kilowatt hours per kilometer. If you look at the electricity bill, it'll tell you how many kilowatt hours your house is using each month. So you can figure out, you know, if I do 200 kilometers a week and it's 0.15 kilowatt hours per um, per week. And then look at the what you pay for kilowatt hours and the electricity bill. You can just do the math to figure out what your car would cost to run. So you, and that's um, in the I would I would add another hundred to that if you're towing a, towing your trailer. I would add you know that it would be 0.27 is right. what the math I did there was that I, I put it at um, the, the reference consumption. I put it to 270. This has gone. It's got a bit more on that because it's you know, hills and things along the trip. So it's going to be consuming 280. So the more detail you can punch into those initial settings in your better route planner, the more accurate the estimate is going to be in your plan. Yeah. And, and but that's what this arrival, yeah, this arrival percentage adds a bit of fudge to, you. and always been like I said before, always been navigating. And if you if you leave thinking you'll get there with five percent. And it starts recalculating because yeah. you know the economy's not water. You sort of if it starts raining, for example, mm -hmm. and you lost five or ten percent to that. Right. It'll tell you to slow down. And you okay. still get there. Yeah. Cool. Hey. You mentioned four routes. Um, before, that's only charging up to eighty or ninety percent. Yeah. On every day, what's what's the recommended for all of them? Yeah. Oh, so it varies. So they, they still sell um, different models of cars with different chemistry batteries. The, the base model, um, Model 3 and Model Y, have what's called an LFP, lithium iron phosphate battery in it. Um, the LFP battery uh, doesn't wear out when it's charged 100% to the same sort of rate. It does wear out like the, you know, typically lithium batteries, you know, the, the damage you do to the battery, the amount of wear they're suffering is, is just, you know, 
doing their job is quite high when they're really empty and quite and really low through you know between 10% and 90% that where if you keep it in that range the wear on the battery is very minimal and then as you get towards 100% the wear you know they start wearing out just just being charged so if you keep your phone topped up all you know overnight 100% sort of thing battery wears out that's why phone batteries wear out every couple of years and whereas your Tesla battery lasts 10 years because they put that 90% limit on it. So it stays within the zone where it wears very little. LFP batteries, they're not actually charging to 100%. 100% is not 100% LFP battery. There's, there's some, um, yeah, so, so if you buy a standard model car today, you'll have an LFP battery. If you buy a long range or performance, you'll get an NCA battery, nickel cadmium uh, battery. Yeah, yeah. So real wheel drive. Real wheel yeah. drive. And just think it's, and now it's just model Y, right? It's like it's not even, there's not even a suffix, it's just model Y and, and model Y performance. Yeah. yeah. So now it, they the different chemistries of batteries need to be treated a bit differently. The, the LFP battery needs to be charged to hundred uh, percent. They recommend at least once a week and the message on the screen, we saw it in the car before. Uh, that is required to calibrate the battery. It needs to be charged to 100% fairly regularly because they're not, a, the way it's managing the battery, it doesn't know where 100% is until you charge it to 100%. So to actually tell you the fuel gauge, how much energy is left in the battery, it's basically, you know, accounting. You know, you've, you've driven 150 kilometers and you've used, you know, 12 kilowatt hours. I, I, you know, I can estimate that the, the battery capacity is you know, 50 kilowatt hours and you've used 12 kilowatt hours, so that's how much fuel I think you've got left in the battery. Through the consumption of the battery, it's just accounting as you charge it and discharge it, it's just counting up how much energy went into the battery and how much energy came out of the battery. You eventually lose count and won't really have an accurate understanding of how much energy is really still in that battery. And you simply, you've counted up and counted back and you've made a you know, 0.1% errors each along the way, and eventually you just don't know how full that battery is anymore. So they say at least once a week, charge it to 100%, it resets that accounting on how full the battery is and sort of can keep a better track of how full the battery is and, and give you more accurate range estimates and things like that. So if it is, say, 70 kilometers a day, it's okay on the LFP to charge it up See what it says, just plug it in and forget about it. If you do the wrong thing, if you change the settings to something that's not recommended by Tesla, the car after a couple of days will pop up a message saying, hey, you have an LFP battery and you haven't charged 100% in seven days, you should do that and just do what the car says. Same if you've got a performance car and you've been charging 100% every day, which would cause unnecessary wear on the battery if you're not using it. If you're going on a trip, so you're leaving on a big trip, slide it up to 100, use it. That's what it's there for. You know, the car has that capacity available to you to use it. And if you use it 10, 15, 20 times a year, it doesn't make that much difference. But if you use it every day, it will wear out the battery faster than it would otherwise. Um, so if you charge, and I've done this, when I was traveling to Adelaide, I was charging you know, every day of that trip. I was charging 100% every day because that's what I paid for and that's what I needed to you know, comfortably get to my destination each day. And after the third day, it popped up saying, hey, you're charging 100% every day. Probably shouldn't. <laughs> do you really <laughs> need to? Do you really need to? Is that what you mean? Yeah, to to if you are, that's cool. But you know, the, the, the message just, just reminds you, that, you know, what you should be doing. So you know, pay, always be navigating, pay attention to what the car tells you, you'll be fine. And remember all those details on the settings there when you go into the details about your car's configuration. You can tap on that and it will give you the info about what your battery is, what yeah. type it is. Yeah. Tap on it again and it will give you the basic charging instructions. Okay. So and, the, and there's a couple of pages of the manual that go into all the the risk of, of, of um, you know, um, referring to something that can upset people, read the manual. But the easiest way is you go to your charge screen and if your car should only charge to 80%, the little arrow will be at 80%. If, it, yeah. if you should so charge so it to 100, it will band, be. And, and, and that little band that you should, between 50 and 90% is on a performance car is marked daily. And that's pretty obvious, right? And the, and the top gets marked trip. Yeah. So yeah. daily, keep it in the daily range. So if you don't have a trip, drag it into the trip. Bit. So yeah, gentlemen, read the instructions. 
stay there here so they don't have to read the manual. <laughs> we know that. You know, read the instructions on the screen. If it beeps and pops up a message, read it. Yeah. Yeah, there, is, there are no serious pro tips that the car won't make you well aware of. There is one. So if you charge to 100% on the batteries that don't like charge to 100%, it's bad to leave it at 100%. So yes. if you charge... Yeah, so it, it, it includes tools, that, so what you should, if you're charging 100% for a trip, you can use schedule charging. So you can set um, the off-peak charging so that, and it will, it will start charging, so, so you know, say you're charging it, you know, your charge is capable, you plug it in, the car knows where you are, it knows um, how fast the charge you've plugged into, the, 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 the charger will tell it that you're capable of charging 7 kilowatts. And it, say the battery's at 60% and it knows that it needs 4 hours to get to 100% ready for your trip. You set schedule charging, you say, I'm going to depart at 6am, it will start charging at 2am to be, so it just touches 100%. 10 minutes before you're out the door. So, so the car spends a minimum amount of time at 100%. If you've got a standard car, you care not for any of these things. So we had a little handout with some of those apps on it. I will email it, but if anyone likes a paper copy, we have paper copies as well. Uh, this is not a silly question. Um, before I got my car, I wanted to, you know, Oh, I um I spoke to the service guy about that question actually. He said the answer's probably going to be no. Yeah. But if you give Tesla a call yeah. and just try, they may. Yeah, because I haven't contacted them. Yeah, all. they may, but yeah. the answer's probably going to be no. The, they the did that with all cars that you couldn't put your referral credits to a car that they already ordered. Yeah. So they're going to probably do the same with it that. Was, it wasn't even. Was no. It, wasn't it was a, oh, it was one of the ones you submitted. It was right. about um the referral credits from Tesla. So Tesla previously had a referral program and then it went silent for a while and they've just reactivated Yeah, they just reactivated it and it now not only gives you credits for cars but also for purchases from the Tesla shop as well. So Frank purchased a um, wall charger and yeah. He's still waiting for his car and he's wondering. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you know, if he'd waited, he could have got the points yeah, and would. yeah, it would have been a bit more but beneficial. Yeah. But yeah. I, have, I haven't contacted Yeah. So contact them and check, but my contact said the answer will probably be Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, great. No, but that's that's the next bit. Um someone asked before about coffee things and different get togethers. So, Tocker as an um, organisation, we organise something at least once a month. So, we have this event this month. Next month, we have a Easter egg hunt on the 1st of April. Um, May is a regularity event. Yeah. So, what day is that going to be, Luke? That's a good question. Yeah. So, so there'll be a regularity event for the... So a, a, a track event. It's... it's um, but not so speed focused. It's about doing laps at a consistent time. You go out for a trial run at the beginning of the day, do some laps around Lakeside, nominate a time, and the closer you get, to you and you lose. Oh, like, actually, like, it might be an economy run for me. Uh, one of those. Two yeah. 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 So skills based event. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then June, there's multiple things going on. There's the motor fest in Brisbane and there's also an EV Expo in Noosa. So we're actually going to do a weekend in Noosa. So do a few things on the Saturday before the Sunday event as well. Um, Linda runs a coffee. Um, yeah, it's a, a little bit of a pause. So I do a south side, um, but everybody's welcome if you want to drive. Um, and it's a general EV coffee and cake. Um, usually midday in the midweek, but we are looking at doing a weekend, you know, Friday evening or Saturday thing as well for people. Um, if you're all members of TOCA, I'll be sharing the events on the TOCA Facebook page, but also on, on many of the other Tesla and EV Facebook pages so that you'll see those events there. David has Magella. They host do, the They do the North Side one over their part of the world. Um, and they are once a month, and I'm hoping to get back to once a month. I just had a few crazy things going on in my life. Um, 
my world the last couple of months. So have you send that email to or do we? No. I will be. I will be putting my event on the Tocker page. Um, and probably popping it onto the Tonka events we list do. as well. So one of the oh, apps... it come through the yeah. Jungle app? Yes. Yeah. 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 So yeah. one of the things we've got... Well. Yeah, yeah. Yes, we will go, we'll go back to that yeah. before you go and get your Some laptop. years ago for all the reasons that we know and hate. But I've had to revisit Facebook because a lot of the very useful pages for your EV and your Teslas are on there. That's all I do on Facebook is check my Tesla stuff and my EV stuff and then I go away. So there's a couple of groups that is worth doing. Toka, we have a Facebook page. So the events um, for David and myself, um, which are open to all EV owners and prospective owners, not just Tesla, will be listed on that page as well as some of the other um, EV Facebook pages that yeah. are out there. And, and we we'll also pop it onto the, the, the member Tonka, as well. Um, so any calendar new, as well. Yeah. Any new members that have joined before today, then um, downloading the Member Jungle app or just using your login on a computer to go in and check the events is really handy. Um, the um, email feature has been a bit tricky lately, but we'll get that back up and running hopefully. So I'll send something out with what's happening for the next few months and give everyone a heads up so you can plan accordingly. Block everything else on Facebook. <laughs> Just get alerts for the Tocker page and one or two of the other EV pages and then you'll get info about things that are going on all over the place pretty easily and be able to come along. And there's, yeah. some, there's some good Facebook pages if the men want to close their ears. There's a Tesla Chicks page which is really nice because you don't get somebody saying read the manual. You get somebody who <laughs> helpfully hands you. Well, if not occasionally, I'll tell you to read the manual. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. and it, you know, it's just yeah, it's just a bit more safer space than being shot down for asking a silly question. So, so I was going to say, ask all the silly questions you can. What I've found is because I was a newbie once too, um, and I I learned a lot today. So um, <laughs> you know, you put your question. Somebody will have experienced what you're looking at or will have the answer out there somewhere. So don't be frightened to, to put your question out there. And if somebody's an idiot, just ignore them uh, and get the, get the good answers. Be aware that there are a ton of Tesla pages. There are a lot of geographical ones now springing up. So there's, who's, who was here from Toowoomba that I was talking yeah, before? Yeah, so to, Darling Downs has a, has a Facebook page for EVs. Uh, Central Queensland has one, the Gold Coast has one and so on. So it's worth joining whatever suits you. So go Tesla um, Queensland rather than Tesla Australia. Yeah. So so join a group, ask questions, get out and play with your car. Yeah. Okay? And Find a 12-year-old with nothing to do <laughs> and get them to teach you how to use the screen. Okay? It's, it's, it's good stuff. And also there's a lot of events coming up from, from the end of next month on. There's an event every month uh, at, a, at a regional centre going up the coast. Uh, come along, answer everybody else's stupid questions and realise how much you actually do know mm -hmm. and uh, how much ignorance is out there. So, you know, get involved yeah. as much as you wish to yeah. and, and enjoy the experience. And one little bit of advice, if you're on some of those Facebook pages and you do have some questions and you're not quite sure how silly it is, inside that page do a search. Mm -hmm. So if it's charging or something like that, throw in a search topic and it'll show you up if there's been some previous posts that cover that. Have a bit of a read through and see if the answer to your question is already there. If you've had a good look and you can't find it, throw your question out there. And yeah, um, you know, there are some pages that are less combative than others, but as David says, just ignore the idiots. Um, scroll through, you'll find somebody who'll help you out. And because then they've always all been us. where you are now, all right? Yeah. We're, all, we're all doing new stuff. I've got uh, children who are in their 40s. I remember when mobile phones came in and they all sat around in little groups, my kids and all their friends, telling, teaching each other how to use mobile phones. We, and I did the same with computers when they came in in the 90s in schools. I sat down with groups of teachers and showed them how to create a file because they couldn't do it. So, so we're, we've all been where you are. We're all learning, all right? Well, you never stop learning. Well, you never stop learning. So throw out your question and, and uh, gather yeah. responses. And the top of Facebook page is you're less likely to get a nasty response back from than some of the 
informal pages that are out there. Yeah, and it's Tonka official, T-O-C-A, not Tesla Owners Australia, because that's a different group as well. Um, and if there's no more questions, Terry's going to do a little song and dance before we go. Because a few people are. Do you want to sing some? Do you want to sing some? All the the thing. Oh, do you want to sing some together?